Hi guys, welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a very elegant and delicious vegetarian appetizer. I'm going to show you how to make my spanakopita filled filo spirals. It's, they're beautiful, they taste delicious, and they're a big crowd pleaser too. Let's go over the ingredients, that way we can get started. We have some baby spinach that I've coarsely chopped, an egg, some feta cheese that I like to buy in chunks, some creamy whole milk ricotta cheese, roasted red peppers that are in the jar, some dried dill, you can use fresh dill if you want, salt, pepper, good quality olive oil. I have some chopped scallions, fresh green onions that I've chopped and I've uh, rinsed in wa water and then drained, and then some phyllo. So I was in New York these past few weeks and I made these while at my sister's house and I shared them with you on my Instagram story, which if you don't follow me, you should totally follow me over on Instagram. And everybody wanted the recipe. Now I've made so many different versions of spanakopita. This one happens to be one of my favorites. I mean, it's just so good when you make it. You'll know that when you um, fill it and form it into a spiral, it just tastes so much better. I don't know, there's something about it. I guess the phyllo gets really crispy. It's just so good. But about the phyllo, <clears throat> there are many different kinds of phyllo. Number four is really common. Number four, they're very, very thin sheets and you're gonna get more sheets per pound. They're usually sold in one pound uh, container packages. But today I'm using the country style phyllo, which is gonna be the number 10. So you're gonna wanna look for that in your supermarket. Um, usually you're going to find number 10 in a specialty food store like a Mediterranean or Middle Eastern specialty food store so try to get it there. If not, I'll link online up where you can get it on Amazon. You can pretty much get everything. But they're going to be thicker, more hardier phyllo sheets. Now you're going to want to make sure that you thaw them in your refrigerator overnight because they do come frozen. And then take them out and leave them at room temperature in the packaging for about two hours so that way they're super easy to work with. The, the filling is so easy to make. I mean, I've gone over it with you many times. I don't pre-cook my spinach. I just chop it up and mix it all together. Now, after over 10 years of making this, I've learned a trick. So if you have a stand mixer, go ahead and take it out and use it. And it's gonna do all the mixing and kneading for you and break it up and like form a really, really creamy filling. And just otherwise, if you don't have a stand mixer, you just mix it with your hands just like I do in all of the other recipes. And I'll link those recipes in the card sections up above. To my mixer with the flat beater attachment, I'm just gonna add about a third of the spinach, the ricotta cheese, all of it. Make sure to use full fat, no low fat cheese in this recipe. One egg, and I'll also add half of the feta cheese. I'm also gonna add a heaping teaspoon of dry dill. If you have fresh dill, go ahead and chop it up and add a little bit more than that. Half a teaspoon of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, lots and lots of it, about a teaspoonful or so, but the exact measurement will be in the recipe link down below. And about a quarter cup of very good quality extra virgin olive oil. Greek olive oil is my favorite. And then we're going to turn it on and let this beat on low speed until everything begins to come together. So as the mixture mixes, then you're going to see that the spinach is going to start to break down. Now I'm going to add all of the rest of the feta cheese and the spinach. And I'm gonna beat it until everything breaks down and forms one nice creamy mixture. I forgot to mention that you have to add the scallions in too. You can add them in in the very beginning with the first third of the spinach. And if all of the spinach doesn't fit in at once when you're adding it in the second time, just do another third and then let it mix and mix and as it needs, it's gonna break down and then add the final batch of spinach. We're just gonna give it a nice mix to make sure everything is incorporated from the very bottom all the way to the top. And then last but not least, we're gonna chop our roasted red peppers. Now I have two big ones and a little one here. And I love roasted red peppers. They're tender, they're smoky, they're slightly sweet. They add a beautiful red color. So I'm just gonna roughly chop them into little cubes. And then I'm just gonna fold them in to the spinach mixture. Now this is not traditional but I do love to add roasted red peppers to as any filling that they go with, and spinach and red pepper goes deliciously together. Just give it a nice mix, and just like that, your spinach pie filling is ready to go. 
So now you're going to want to have two trays lined with parchment paper ready to go. Your oven should be preheated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit so that way it's waiting for you and you're not waiting for it. You're going to take the phyllo pastry out of the packaging and we're going to open it up. Here we go. So now you're going to also want to have some melted salted butter ready. I like to use salted butter just because it has so much more flavor. Or if you don't have melted butter, you can use olive oil. You can also use um, unsalted butter and just sprinkle in about a quarter teaspoon, an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of salt in there. That'll do the trick. Now we're going to start filling this and rolling it up. All right, so leave all the sheets stacked up one on top of the other. We're just going to take a little bit of melted butter and just drizzle it on the top half portion. Then we're going to take about half a cup of filling. It's actually a little bit more than half a cup. So you're going to put half a cup of filling and you're going to spread that out. You might need another tablespoon or two or so. You don't want to fill this too much because when you go to roll it up, then it's going to start to break on you. Just spread it out just like that on the bottom third of it, as low as you can go. I'll put another tablespoon. Look at how pretty those red peppers look in there, that cheese, it's so creamy. Now we're just going to take the bottom part and just roll it up. Very easy, just like that. And then we're going to take the corner and form it into like a snail shape or like a spiral. And if it breaks a little bit on you, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal at all. You can even take a little piece of the corner of the filo that's kind of empty and just fix it up a bit. There you go, just like that if you're really worried about it. It's not a big deal though. Then you're going to take the spiral and transfer it onto your tray lined with baking paper. And we're going to keep doing this until all of the filling and the phyllo pastry is done. My spirals are filled and formed. Now I'm just gonna brush them with all of this butter that's left over. And I put five on each pan so that way they get nice and crispy all around. They, they would all fit in one, but then that would be too much because they wouldn't brown evenly on all sides. So brush the butter all around. Then I'm gonna pop these into my oven and let them bake for about an hour or so or until they get nice and golden brown everywhere. If you're putting both trays in at the same time, at the same time, make sure to rotate the pan so at about the 30 minute mark, switch the bottom tray to the middle and the middle one to the bottom so that way they cook evenly. And as soon as they're ready, I'm gonna show you what they look like as soon as they come out. So these took about 45 minutes to bake. So I've tested both ways, cooking them all on one tray where they're kind of like squished together. And that if you do put them all on one tray, say you don't have two trays and you're just in a hurry and you wanna bake them all at once, they are gonna take about an hour to an hour and like five or 10 minutes. But when you do separate them the way I did here and you bake them on two separate trays and there's plenty of room for the air to circulate, they're done faster. So in my oven, they took about 40, 45 minutes. So when you're gonna go in at the 30 minute mark to flip the trays around, you'll see if they start to become nice and golden, start checking, at, checking on them every like five, 10 minutes after that so they don't become overbaked. But you want them to be really nice, golden, and crisp all around. And once they come out of the oven, you want them to sit at room temperature to cool and rest for about 15, 20 minutes because the filling is gonna be piping hot. These are a great appetizer to serve at room temperature. So it's one of those great make ahead um, things that you can make like a couple hours before your guests arrive. Just warm them through slightly in the oven before you serve them or just serve them at room temperature. They're also a great make ahead freezer um, recipe because before you bake them, if you wrap the trays in plastic wrap, they can be stored in the freezer up to a month and just take them out and bake them until they're golden following the same instructions as we did in this video. But I can't take it, the house smells amazing. I'm gonna cut into this.
Yes, and this bite does have some red pepper in it. Let's go in. You could serve this with a side of tzatziki sauce. I'll post that link to that recipe below and in the card section. Mmm. The phyllo is buttery and flaky and so crisp. The filling is super creamy. I love the flavor of the red peppers that they add in here. The spinach, since it wasn't pre-cooked, along with all the herbs, adds so much freshness. Now, ricotta is not a traditional ingredient in um, spanakopita, but I love the creaminess that it lends, and if you don't like it or you wanna leave it out, you can just substitute more feta cheese for it, but you're definitely gonna wanna try this. I'll continue eating this once we're done. The recipe, as always, is on the website, www.dimitrasdishes.com, as well as underneath in the description box down below. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, and I will see you all next time. Yes, us.